Hello everyone. So I'm going to show you a few things I've learned today. I woke up with this idea of making textured text in Godot and I was not sure how to do this without using viewports. So I was trying to mess up with shaders, which is an area I'm really interested in but I know very little about. And the best way to learn is always to play with it and try stuff. So I've spent today some time to uh, learn a little bit about how to do this and I've come up with I came up with two different solutions each one with the uh, different pros and cons I'm going to show you and They're still not the perfect solution for what I really wanted to do, but I think it's um, Quite good and it can help a lot of people to do similar things if you want to texture some text so I've set up a very simple project here and I've used a simple label, I've imported a font just to show you and I'm going to start by uh, setting up a new canvas item material and then I'm going to create a shader. Now I'm going to use the shader graph because it's uh, for me it's, I'm not used to the shader language yet so the graph is easier. I'm also used to doing shaders in Blender so this for me is much more convenient but you know both work anyway and also to, I think, to visually teach is better to use the shader graph. So, the two solutions, the two different ways are using one, the vertex shader, and the other, the fragment shader. We're going to start with the fragment shader. So I'm going to start by importing my texture here, creating a texture uniform, and I'm going to use this wood texture. Now, when I connect the color of the texture to the color of the output, I get this blend color, a solid color, because the UVs are missing. So the UVs, if you don't know uh, about, usually, you know, we use these more in 3D, but in 2D is also used. It's like how you map the coordinates of a texture to the coordinates of the object that you are applying the texture to. So since there are no UVs here, Godot doesn't know how to map this texture. So you're going to use this input socket, which Godot is generating the UVs for your label, to the UV of the texture. And so now we get the texture mapped here. So the problem is, uh, this could be a solution, and this could be already enough for most people. It's very, very simple. Um, what I came to realize is that this is not con a continuous, uh, the texture is not being applied the way you see it here. Okay, It's like jumping in, uh, each letter is like a square being cut of different places of this texture, original texture. Why? Because the way Godot uh, works with importing fonts, it creates like a sprite sheet and each letter goes to a different place in this sprite sheet. So A will be in a place and B will probably be in a different place. Uh, so the texture is not continuous as it should and the way you can see this is by using this UV map which is uh, easier to understand you see so the UV map has all this like a gradient and when you see it here it's not at all uh, as it is in the original image the color is, is like jumping in and out of different columns so this can be a problem if you're trying to do something more um, to apply the texture in a more continuous way as it is originally. If you don't need that, then the, this first solution is fine for you. So let me just load again the wood. One thing that you might want to do is to resize, to scale the texture a little bit because it might be too big or it may be too small. So how you do that, you manipulate the UV vector using a scalar. So I'm going to show you how to do it. You add a scalar plus vector operator. Now we connect the UV here and out. So it's multiplying, which is okay. So let's put to one. So multiplying by one means no change. So it's original as it was before. Now if I increase this to 1.5, you're gonna see it will start getting smaller. Let me show you a bigger like five okay now you see these details are starting to show up and then if i really increase this the texture gets all messed up why does this happen because we are basically shrinking the texture and 
is is looking for UV coordinates that are outside uh, the texture size right now. So what happens is that when it goes off the edge of the texture, it uses the last color. So you get all these lines, which is the last color that it was able to fetch. Now this happens also when you import sprites into Godot, for example. And the way you overcome these situations is by going to this to the texture properties and enable repeat. So that when it goes off the limit, it repeats the texture again. Now here we don't have an option to repeat the texture. So what we can do to uh, work around this is instead of using a JPEG like I used here, we are going to import the texture first using the 2D texture import. And then I'm going to toggle the repeat flag on and import. And now I'll use not the JPEG, but the text. And now you see the texture is repeating. So now I have this nice texture. Okay, so now you can see I can change this to 20 and it gets even smaller. And this is nice. So how to get the continuous uh, texture, like in the case of this UV map. Let's put this to one again. So one thing I thought was we can use the UV of not of the font, but of the screen because it will show. OK, let's put this also as an imported texture so we get the repeat effect. OK. So now you see it's continuous. I get the blue, then the darker blue, then the purple, etc, etc. But the problem with the UV screen is that it's connected to the position of, of the object in the screen. So the, the texture is, is mapped to the screen, not to the object. So if I move this, you'll see that the texture stays in place and this is actually acting like a mask to, this, to the texture that is below. This is, can be nice and uh, if you don't move your object, this can be a solution. Or even to produce other kind of effects, this can also be good. Uh, but if you are moving your object and you don't want this kind of effect, you want, you want, you know, if I want this green to start in the A, then I want the green to go along with the A, then this doesn't work, okay? So another option that I just, uh, I just read about in Facebook, I was asking for some ideas, was to, and I still have to try, was to use the UV screen, but then use an, an uniform vector, which passes the position of the object itself, and then you kind of drag the texture along with you. So this is another option that I still have to try and see how it works. So let me just show you the other, the vertex shader. The vertex shader will do similar things. So let's just add the uniform, add our texture here. We'll do, use the UV map and color and then UV. Okay, so what happens here? Um, the sh vertex shader does slightly different things and the, the, the disadvantage of the vertex shader is that, is that it, it shades the vertices of the object itself and it kind of blends the color between vertices. So you don't get the sharp uh, details of the texture. For example, here you cannot read the text that's in this, the, in this texture. You only see the colors blending uh, one out of each other. Um, so the UVs are still messed up, as you can see this is not continuous, but I can use the vertex coordinates as the UV. Now this doesn't work, apparently, because the vertices are using positions which are completely out of the range of this uh, texture. Now the UV texture, the UV uh, mapping goes from 0 to 1 in both directions. And here we are using um, a scale of the size of this object, which in the case of my label, we can see here. So we have um, 390 and 456. So we need to convert this size into zeros, uh, into a scale of zero to one, so that this maps properly, right? So how to do that? Go back to the shader. 
Okay. So because this isn't a square, the the horizontal um, size is different from the vertical size. So I cannot just apply the same mathematical operation to the to the vector. I need to split it and then apply one operation to the x and one operation to the y. If this was a square, it would be easier, but it's not. So let's split the vector into scalars. Whoops. Oh, but sometimes this shader editor has some strange bugs. Okay, so now I have x, y, and z. I'm going to do some calculations with these two. z doesn't really matter for anything. And then in the end, I'm going to connect them again to a vector and map that to the UV. Okay, so now what do I need to do? I need to, let's fire up my calculator here. So I need to, let me just remind me again of the sizes, 390 on the x axis. So 390 will be uh, 1 in terms of UV, right? When I get to the 390, uh, x equals 390, I want in the UV mapping x equals 1. Okay, so we need to convert this scale into the UV scale. So we are going to divide 1 by 390 and we get 0, 0, 0025. And this is a very small number, but we can use, probably we won't have that much of a precision, but we can use it anyway. So I'm going to do a scalar operation and I'm going to multiply this x by 0, 0, 0025 and connect here. And uh, you already see the x value uh, is going from the left to the, of the texture to the right of the texture. Okay, so it's correct the map. Now I will do the same again to the y. I'm not going to do because it's just you know, it's just repeating uh, the same step again and actually the color will be the same because this color is the same in the, in the same column so you won't really see any difference here. Anyway, so the disadvantage here in using the vertex shader is that, is that you get the blended colors um, and not really the sharp details of the texture. Might be good in some situations. And, and yeah, that's it. So I hope this was useful. And in case you have any questions, just leave them in the comments. Thanks, bye-bye.